Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Arrange Your Own Marriage. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to initiate conversation with your arranged marriage date. So we'll start right from the beginning when you have a match on a matrimonial platform. So when you have received an interest from someone, they might have indicated, you know, let's say their their contact information, either an email address or a or a phone number, saying that you know, please feel free to get in touch on this number. So that means they are actually interested in having a conversation with with you, which means that you should initiate and you should reach out to them because they, you are the one who sent them an interest and they have responded by giving giving you their number. So sometimes I understand that it's very hard to trust these platforms or you know uh, trust people on these platforms, and you want to let's say be sure before you let's say text somebody or talk to somebody. Especially it happens for women when they have to text men, right? Do a small background check uh, of this person to see that you're happy with what you see. Is this a real person? It's not a fraudster, a scamster, or a fake profile. Just do a simple Google search of the information that they've provided about themselves. Can you see them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, somewhere? Um, and does what you see enthuse some sort of confidence in you? Then go ahead and you know sort of contact the person. And if you don't feel very comfortable sort of contacting uh, uh the person on on a phone call you know send them a message um but yeah it's always good to do some basic due diligence before you reach out to someone if you don't feel confident for some reason right it's always very nice and polite to to send them a message before you randomly call them at odd times because you don't know if they are actually available at that point of time or not so you know it could be an sms or it could be a message on whatsapp send them a message uh you know in you know introducing yourself and asking them when is a good time to talk uh, now let's say you know uh this number was shared directly by this person um uh and not their parent for instance that means that they might be interested in having a little text conversation before they actually get on a call with you uh sometimes people prefer to speak on the phone rather than you know wasting a lot of time messaging so it's always polite and it's always nice uh, to ask people what their preference is when you initiate conversation with them. Now, suppose somebody else is initiating conversation with you. They sent you an interest and you're interested. It's nice if you're interested to leave your number with them so that they can contact you and to also specify very clearly what is the mode of communication you prefer. Do you prefer an email? Do you prefer a message? Do you prefer a call? And, you know, if you're saying, you know, call, make sure you you indicate what is a good time to talk or something like that. Try and be flexible in the beginning. Um, don't be very specific saying, hey, here's my number. Please call me between, you know, 9 and uh, uh, 11 a.m. on weekends or something like that. Because it shows that you're not very flexible and, you know, it might seem like you're being very robotic and that doesn't come across very well. Right. Now. Once you've initiated conversation, once you've exchanged a few texts, depending on where that person is, you know, if there's a time difference, you know, if that person lives across the world or something, uh, it's always great to try and set up time to speak over a weekend or something so that, you know, uh, both of you get some time to talk to each other because you might not be able to text each other or talk to each other on an everyday basis because of the time difference. Now, if they're in the same city as you, uh, then, you know, Look to uh, progressing to a meet pretty quickly because uh, nobody likes to sort of, you know, text endlessly uh, unless, you know, they're not very serious about this process. Now, I understand, you know, with, with the lockdown, COVID and all of that, it's very difficult to meet. So why don't you actually set up time to get on a video call with this person? Uh, and you know if they're comfortable meeting you in a in a sort of public place you know and you're at a safe distance from each other and you know you don't mind let's say taking a walk somewhere um, it's okay to meet but having said that you know you have to take utmost care today to um, uh, not put your life or someone else's life in jeopardy Uh, so if it's video calls video calls it is Um, but remember that nobody who is serious about getting married likes to text or chat endlessly on the phone without meeting. Everybody is looking for an immediate opportunity to feel a certain physical connection before they take a conversation forward. 
Um, the other question that a lot of people ask me and a lot of people feel hesitant about uh, through during the arranged marriage process is, is multi-timing okay? Um, let me say that everybody in this process is actually speaking to multiple people because they're trying to evaluate who makes for a good partner. Now, this is not love and this is not a committed relationship that you're in. And so it's completely okay if you're speaking to multiple people through this process, because let's face it, going through the entire ordeal of, you know, searching, matching with someone, having a little conversation, meeting them, and then, you know, having multiple conversations, all of this takes a large amount of time and if you're looking to do all of this serially one after the other uh, you could probably be getting your grandchildren married by that point of time so it's completely okay if you're multi-timing speaking to a lot of people at once but you want to be transparent about it i do know some people who have a problem with it because you know they don't do it or you know they confuse this whole thing for love marriage but uh, you know it's okay to be honest about it if someone asks you if you're seeing other people or something like that um, and there's nothing wrong with it right if it leads to breaking off a perfectly wonderful sort of you know uh, conversation that you're having with someone it's completely okay because maybe that says something about this person they could be someone who is very let's say insecure or clingy or you know expecting too much because expecting commitment from someone that you've spoken to once or that you've matched with a platform is is ridiculous however if you have met somebody couple of times right uh, two times three times and you know you're having serious conversations with them that's when you actually want to put your other search on pause and really give this a shot now let me let me be very clear on what is okay if you have met someone less than twice, if you've met anybody that you're seeing through this process less than twice and you're speaking to multiple people and you're having multiple first dates, then it's okay to look at multiple people. But if you've indicated some sort of interest, met them two, three times, have had deep conversations, exchanged like sort of really personal stories and so on, um, and sort of in some sense led people on, then it's not very nice to be, you know, speaking to multiple people while you're still seriously pursuing something. So I'm sure you will know the difference. And, and if it feels wrong to be talking to multiple people while you're seriously pursuing something with someone, you should probably trust your feelings um, and, uh, you know, be honest with yourself as well as with the other person to see if there is a real shot here. Speak to people multiple times before you actually make a judgment on whether this person is right for you or not. Because if you're making a decision just based on, let's say, one physical meeting or one physical date, I would say that you're not giving yourself or the other person a fair shot because, you know, people are different in different situations. Some people are awkward in the first conversation. You must give yourself as well as the other person some benefit of doubt. Unless someone is absolutely weird or creepy or strange for some reason, um, I would strongly urge you to give uh, give people at least two chances, two dates before you make a decision on whether you want to, uh, you know, go meet someone else. Because honestly, there's very little that you can find out about someone in just one date, no matter how amazing a reader of personalities you are, um, I would say um, don't be don't be uh, Im that impulsive when it comes to deciding who you want to spend the rest of your life with because there are just way too many things you have to consider and unless until and unless you are clear about what you really want and what can result in a nurturing, positive and a fruitful relationship for you. Uh, you're you're not going to be able to evaluate someone in just one go so i hope you will uh, um, give everybody that you meet a fair shot uh, before you decide it's an eye or nay so good luck and happy spouse hunting as always